Hey guys, welcome! Yeah, I'm finally back in my shipping container darkroom. For uh, many of you who are new to the channel, my name is Nate, and in today's episode I will show you how to make a simple silver gelatin emulsion. So yeah, without further ado, let's get started! The process was introduced in 1871 by Richard Leach Maddox and it was later improved by uh, Charles Bennett in uh, 1878. Its sole purpose was to supersede the wet plate collodion process because it's much easier to process and work with. And now almost 250 years later it can be found in pretty much all commercially available light sensitive materials from paper to film. Modern emulsions are super advanced and complicated in order to produce high sensitivity and that requires uh, the use of special tools and hard to get chemicals. So let's rather return back to 1880s and uh, make the emulsion of that time. Starting with safety of course, make sure to put on some safety glasses to protect you from silver nitrate. And uh, you should also put on some uh, latex protection gloves. This is a rather long list of equipment. You will need three tempered glass beakers, one 500 milliliters and the other two 150 milliliters. I just broke the last 500 milliliter beaker yesterday, so I will have to be a bit more careful with mixing today. Moving on with smaller glass or ceramic baking tray that's gonna be used to chill the emulsion. I got this one in IKEA just for a few bucks. A heat source, I will be using a hot plate of this magnetic stirrer and a uh, crock pot that is gonna help me to keep the solutions at the right temperature. If you don't have those, don't worry, because back in the days when I didn't have all this equipment, I just used those one plate stoves with a smaller water filled pot. And yeah, make sure to cover all the indication lights because you really don't want to end up with an exposed emulsion. Next one on the list is a thermometer. I'm using this cheap digital cooking thermometer. You can find the link to it in the description below. A precise scale, measuring cylinder, Big stainless steel mixing bowl that's gonna be used for washing. Stainless steel or plastic potato riser that's gonna be used for uh, noodling the emulsion. Stainless steel spoons. Half a square meter of uh, nylon cloth. A large syringe of some sort. It's important that you can uh, control the flow and that the hole is not too big. I made an attachment for mine using some thin plastic tubing. I uh, melted the end together and uh, pierced a hole through with a small needle. A timer of some sort, stainless steel wire mesh strainer. In order to wash the emulsion you will need some ice and for that purpose I filled these uh, ice bags with some distilled water. To chill the emulsion you will need a fridge, light proof black bag that is big enough to fit the small glass baking tray, a uh, light proof container to store the emulsion, I found those on uh, eBay, I will link them below if I can uh, find them again. And you won't be able to do all this without a darkroom illuminated with uh, red safe lights. Okay, let's proceed with uh, material list. One liter or more of uh, distilled water. 10.5 grams of uh, potassium bromide. Only 0 0.4 grams of uh, potassium iodide. 12 grams of uh, silver nitrate. 21 grams of gelatin. Photographic grade is of course the best, but you can use food grade as well and it should be at least 240 bloom. Bloom tells you how hard the emulsion is. The higher the number, the harder it is when dried. A grain of Timol, and the last one on the list is five milliliters of 95% uh, grain alcohol. If you're finding this hard to follow, don't worry, because in the description below, I also linked a written tutorial, including full list of uh, equipment and materials. I would like to point out that I'm following the recipe of Mark Osterman and that I learned many things that I'm going to be showing you today from Denise Ross and her Light Farm blog. So you should definitely check them out if you're interested in this kind of processes. Okay guys, before you start try to memorize all 11 steps because quantities, temperatures and order is very important. I also recommend you to wash all your equipment in uh, some distilled water from uh, glass beakers to potato riser, so you don't uh, end up with uh, any accidental emulsion contamination. Start by preparing the first melt gelatin. Pour 85 milliliters of distilled water into a 500 milliliter beaker and uh, add 3 grams of photographic grade gelatin.
Then wait for at least 15 minutes so the gelatin becomes fully swollen and easily flattened. Proceed with reserve gelatin. Pour 80 milliliters of distilled water into a glass beaker and slowly add 18 grams of photographic grade gelatin. You don't want to put all the gelatin in at once because it will not incorporate nicely. Once you have all the gelatin in, let it soak as much water as possible. How much water you need really depends on the gelatin you're using. Some will absorb less and some more water. Just make sure it's nice and moist. This reserved gelatin will be added to the emulsion later on. When making the emulsion you really shouldn't be in rush, but rather make sure that uh, every step is done correctly. Now that the first smell gelatin has swollen, it's time to dissolve it. Place the beaker in hot water bath, or in my case I will use a hot plate of magnetic stirrer that will help to keep everything in motion while heating up. You should keep this solution at constant temperature of 50 degrees Celsius or 120 degrees Fahrenheit. While you're waiting for the main pot to get to temperature, you can prepare the silver solution by dissolving 12 grams of silver nitrate in a glass beaker filled with 85 milliliters of distilled water. Heat this silver solution to around 120 degrees Fahrenheit or 50 degrees Celsius using a hot water pan or crock pot. When all the first gelatin has melted and you reached 50 degrees Celsius, proceed by slowly adding first 10.5 grams of potassium bromide and then 0.4 grams of potassium iodide. You will experience a small temperature drop, but it's gonna go back up quickly. If you're using the same thermometers, the same mixing rods and so on, make sure to wash them before you put them in another solution to prevent any cross-contamination. Stir the solution until there is no gelatin or halides to be seen as they have dissolved completely. Guys, after step 6 everything should be done under red safe lights. As you can see mine are really bright so the camera can see better, but normally you'd like them to be as dim as possible. Let's combine the silver with halides. When the silver solution has reached the same temperature as the halide solution, go on and draw half of this solution into a syringe, adding on the adapter I made from the plastic tube. We will incorporate the silver solution into the halides in exactly 2 minutes, so I set my timer to 2 minutes and 30 seconds. I added additional 30 seconds so I can refill the syringe with the other half. Once you have everything ready, start the timer and slowly squirt the heated silver solution in a continuous stream while stirring. It will instantly change its color from transparent to milky. Constantly watch the timer as you don't want to be too slow or too fast. At 1 minute mark your syringe should be empty, so fill it up with the other half of the silver solution and repeat the step. As you combine the silver with the gelatin halide solution, you will see two clear liquids change into a milky white silver bromo iodide emulsion. At least this is how it looks like under red safe lights, but it actually has milky yellow color to it. This is where the crystals are formed and their shape is determined by your controls from temperature to flow rate of the silver solution. Here we are not that precise and therefore we will get crystals of different shapes and sizes from octagons, cylinders, T's and so on. After the silver has been incorporated it's time to ripen the emulsion by maintaining it at 50 degrees Celsius for 15 minutes with constant gentle stirring. While the emulsion is ripening, you can begin draining all the excess water from the reserve gelatin. I didn't have any, so I just added this gelatin to the emulsion. At this point, temperature will drop quite significantly, so wait until it comes back to 50 degrees Celsius. This step is called the digestion, as we need to wait until all the new gelatin is completely dissolved. After 5 minutes you can turn off the stirrer, take the magnet out, pour the hot emulsion into a glass baking tray, and carefully slide it into the black plastic bag. 
Fold the back over to make sure that there is no light coming in and slide it in the fridge letting it set for a few hours. We are almost there so it's time for a little treat. Once the liquid emulsion has stiffened to a hard jelly, take it out of the fridge and out of the plastic bag. Scoop out the gelled emulsion with a stainless steel spoon and put it inside a potato ricer. Place the nylon cloth over the wire mesh strainer and squeeze the ricer to create emulsion noodles. Let them fall into the center of the cloth. When you have successfully noodled all the emulsion, gather the edges of the cloth and secure it with a rubber band. It doesn't have to be too tight. Now fill the big stainless steel bowl with the distilled water and add a few ice cubes. Take the emulsion pouch and soak it in this water, first moving it around for 5 minutes and then for additional 5 minutes without agitation. Repeat this step two more times, changing the water after each cycle. By doing this we are getting rid of unwanted potassium nitrate. After washing, drain the emulsion noodles thoroughly for at least 15 minutes and then scoop them into a clean glass beaker. Start remelting the emulsion in an electric crock pot or using hot plate at around 50 degrees Celsius or 120 degrees Fahrenheit so you can add the finals. To finish this emulsion off I'm adding 5 milliliters of 95% alcohol so the emulsion will run smoother and a few grams of thymol. This is a preservative and will prevent the bacteria growth. Before pouring it into the storage container, I also like to take a spoon and scoop out all of that foam that got formed during mixing. This is just the first step of the bubble battle. After that, just pour the emulsion in a light tight container, store it in the fridge and use it. Voila, we just made ourselves some proper emulsion. Before coating on uh, paper or glass, I recommend you to add in some chrome alum which will harden the emulsion and uh, make it more resilient to processing. This emulsion is sensitive to blue, violet and ultraviolet light and the speed can vary from batch to batch because we are using this DIY equipment. But in the next few days I will for sure test the speed of this emulsion and I will share the results with you in the video next week. If you'd like to learn how to coat this emulsion on glass and uh, make your own dry plates, check out this video up here. There you go, we came to the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed watching and that you found it useful. If you did, please don't forget to press that like button. And uh, please share your experience and tips down in the comment section below. Until next time, enjoy!